Does the Catholic Church still give last rites to someone on their deathbed? You may have an image in your head of a Catholic priest standing over a body at a traffic accident or entering a hospital room to say prayers over a sick person right up until the moment that they die or even after they're dead. But those images don't do justice to the beauty and power of the sacrament that we call the anointing of the sick, one that has its origins in the earliest Christian communities. Is anyone among you sick? He should call for the priests of the church and they should pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. Don't feel bad if you've associated this sacrament with death. There are actually quite a few misconceptions about the anointing of the sick. For starters, we never anoint those who have already died. Like all sacraments, the anointing of the sick may only be celebrated by living people. So anytime you see a priest in a movie making the sign of the cross on a dead body, that's technically not this sacrament. The Catholic Church does have other special prayers for after a person has died, but those are distinct from what we're talking about here. This, along with the Sacrament of Reconciliation, is considered a sacrament of healing, not a sacrament of death, which is why it's no longer known as last rites. That's an older term that resulted in probably the biggest misconception about the anointing of the sick, that it should be saved for the last moment of someone's life. I remember as a hospital chaplain entering patients' rooms and having them flip out because they assumed the presence of a priest meant that all hope was lost and that death was near. Well, if we think about the sacraments in that way, we forget about what they really are. Sacraments are ways in which we experience God's grace through our human senses. They are given to us by God for our spiritual health and well-being. In fact, there are three repeatable sacraments of the church. As with Eucharist and reconciliation, a Catholic may receive the anointing of the sick more than once, and we're even encouraged to do so. But that brings up a good question. When and how often can Catholics receive this sacrament? The proper time for receiving this holy anointing has arrived when the believer begins to be in danger of death because of illness or old age. Each time a Christian falls seriously ill, they may receive the anointing of the sick, and after they have received it, if the illness worsens. Now, you shouldn't call your local priest to come anoint you every time you have to visit the cough and cold aisle at your local pharmacy. But if you're heading into the operating room for surgery or some other fairly serious procedure, even if you're young, then that would be an appropriate time to receive this sacrament. Or if someone is diagnosed with a serious long-term or terminal illness, then that's the right time for them to ask for it. And as our parents and grandparents get older and begin to experience more health problems, that's also a fitting time to receive the anointing of the sick. So this sacrament is one that you can receive repeatedly, but it's not intended to be used with too much frequency. On the other hand, it would be a waste of God's abundant grace to postpone it until the final hour of death. If you're wondering whether you or someone in your life should receive an anointing, feel free to ask your local priest what he thinks. The anointing of the sick is a prayer of healing, but not only for physical healing, we also pray for our spiritual health and for the strength to bear the burden of illness. As Catholics, we are asked to see our sufferings as a way of being united with the sufferings of Christ. Pain and suffering have come into your life, but remember, pain, sorrow, suffering are but the kiss of Jesus, a sign that you have come so close to Him that He can kiss you. The Church teaches that the sacrament of the anointing of the sick has these effects. Uniting the sick person with the suffering Jesus endured during his last hours. Giving the person strength, peace, and courage to endure in a Christian manner the sufferings or illness of old age. Imparting the forgiveness of sins. Providing for the restoration of health. And helping the sick person in preparation for passing into eternal life. The celebration of this sacrament can happen in any number of places, including during Sunday Mass at your local parish. But because it involves the forgiveness of sins, this is a sacrament that only a priest or bishop can administer. First, he'll lay his hands on the head of the person to be anointed. Then he'll take a specially blessed oil and anoint their forehead and the palms of their hands, saying, Through this holy anointing, may the Lord in His love and mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. 
May the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up. Out of all the sacraments, this seems to be the one that Catholics know and understand the least about. Perhaps that's because it deals so closely with sickness and death, things people generally don't like to talk about or even think about. We keep them at arm's length because, frankly, they're a little frightening. But that's where our faith comes in. Throughout the ages, God has continually assured us that we do not have to be afraid of suffering or even death. The anointing of the sick is a tangible expression of that promise, giving us courage in difficult times. In my opinion, some of the most comforting and beautiful prayers in our church are found in the ritual of this sacrament. Father in heaven, through this holy anointing, grant this person comfort in their suffering. When they are afraid, give them courage. When afflicted, give them patience. When dejected, give them hope. And when alone, assure them of the support of your holy people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you.